Hey, gorgeous. Hi, how you doing? Good, honey. The people are, are waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know that I was supposed to request. So until you said that, I was just on there like, I didn't know what to do. No worries. How you doing? You look beautiful. Thank you. They're like, tell her to follow me, please. They're like, she'll never follow me. I'm like, you never know. She might. So your fans are deep here. I definitely follow some people. If I see their name a bunch of times, I, I sometimes finally catch on and follow people. Yes. How are you? How is quarantine going? I'm well. I'm well. Um, quarantine is not is not my thing, but... <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm trying to make use of the time. Right. Okay. And just, you know, but it's, and it's getting easier as the time goes on. Right. You know? Yeah. But, I'm excited to talk to you um, today. Me too. Love your curls. Um, so Thank you. Jude, you grew up in Detroit mm -hmm. um, in a predominantly black church environment, right? Um, how did that inspire, like, your sounds and your, like, way, if you will, um, yeah, I grew up in Detroit. Um, I think I moved there when I was nine from, um, before that I was in Grand Rapids. Okay. And so I spent my time at two different churches. One was, uh, Bethel Pentecostal in Grand Rapids and the other one was Perfecting in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was just for us, it was more of my environment than any school really was because I went to a lot of different schools. Like, 10 or 11 different schools. So the only thing that never changed in my life was the church I went to, if right. that makes sense. So that yeah. was like my constant. That's where my friends were. Um, that's where I learned to sing and dance and act. And um, it really shaped everything about me. It shaped everything about me from my spirituality mm -hmm. to my actual, the way that I do um, music and art and um, all of it. it I can't. <laughs> I cannot thank God or my mother enough for having me there, you know? Yeah. Because I don't know who I would be without it. Um, you left Detroit at 16 to come here to L.A. You, like, took a big leap of faith. What did that step, that leap of faith, teach you? Because you're already grounded in Christianity. What did that experience teach you of leaving home at such an early age to you already knew what you wanted to do? What did that teach you? Um, I mean, it taught me so much. It was a, it was a scary thing to do, but I think because I was so young, I, I none of that dawned on me. It wasn't, it didn't feel scary. It just felt like this is what I was supposed to do. And I was sure of that. I had been trying to get to LA since I was 12 years old. So, um, and I had just been trying, my mother was the type of mother who she would have like, you know, packed up her car and gone to LA and lived yeah. in the car. Like she would have done anything. <laughs> But we just didn't even have, like, the car to live in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we right. didn't even have, like, any way to get here. Right. And so um, we waited and we prayed. And we just, we prayed for the opportunity. And it was just one of those things where it was so clear. My sister, my older sister, she got a job transfer to L.A. Mm -hmm. And they were paying for her U-Haul. Wow. You know, to move her. She worked at, like, an accounting firm. Wow. And they were paying for a u-haul and i was like that's, i'm on the u-haul right that's <laughs> you know time. because i had really been praying for a way for four years and um and so we took we just took the chance and sometimes that stuff just happens just the way that opportunities arise are so clear right you know right. and it's so um obvious to you that the fear just it just wasn't even a part of it when you got here you like took off though right like you started working and you were in a girl group yourself how that's so random that you were in a girl group when you came I in, know and then you signed with LA Reed and even wrote for Fifth Harmony um work from home how did that come about yeah well it was actually all of that happened over the course of like eight years okay. okay so it was a very slow burn so I got here at 16 I ended up in a girl group that year mm -hmm. um I didn't know anybody in the music industry, mm -hmm. but I was a backup dancer. And at the studio where I would rehearse, mm -hmm. they were doing auditions for a girl group. And I didn't really think I was a singer. I thought I was a rapper. So I told them, well, I, I, I can't really sing, but I'll rap. 
you know, and I can write really good so I can write you, you guys songs and I can rap and dance. Right. And they were like, we don't need a rapper, we need a singer. And so I said, okay, well, I'll sing. And I sang and I was in the girl group that day. Wow. And so I did that when I was 16 for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then I started meeting people in the music industry because of that. Right. That's how I ended up writing for different, you know, TV shows and different people. And um, eventually met L.A. Reid, but that was between 16 and 19. So that's so. A, you're an example of telling it like it is. Thank you for saying that, because so many people are watching this and how I said it, people would think, oh, you just got here and it happened overnight. But you're like, no, it was a course. It was a journey. It was a process. Oh, no. I mean, we lived in a different place every couple months. Mm -hmm. We didn't have work, really. We didn't ever have a car. I took buses until I got a record deal. Um, we lived in the back of a church. I mean, we did anything we had to do. It was like a very, I don't ever want anybody to think that it was a miraculous thing. It did right. not happen the way that it did on Star. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a very slow burn. It was a very difficult process. My mother sacrificed more than I can ever repay. Um, and it was very hard. And I think that anybody who's ever moved to LA in that way mm -hmm. has probably had some somewhat of that experience. It's just a difficult place. Right. Really is. Right. Um, so star, oh, the people are in here. They're like, hey, get the star, get the star. Like, I know. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know they don't care about anything but star. They don't, girl. But look, I, I It's OK. Say, yes. OK, so star, you, we loved you on there. Star Davis three seasons. Okay, I have a few questions for you because okay. we want to know. Um, and the cast got together recently for a Zoom. How was that? I saw you guys, everybody we got together. We did. We've actually Zoomed a couple times now with different groups. Like a couple people were missing the first time, so we did another one. That's so um, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy that we have a cast that has now become friends who still want to zoom right <laughs> you know what i mean like we really it's nothing for us to have like a group chat or half on house party or whatever it is you know um we just made friendships that we don't we don't need to be on set for we right. don't need to have a we don't need to be working to want to talk to each other and i think that that's i didn't know that was rare because that's really my first experience mm -hmm. you know on a show but i'm learning the more sets I go on, I'm learning that it is rare and I'm so grateful for it. I wish I knew when I was there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how rare that was going to be, but I know now. And it's I'm just so grateful for those people, for all of them. I was like, look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. um, that's something that you don't expect, right? To become family with people that you work with. So that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it was amazing. I'm just, I'm still blown away by it. Right. So, okay, last year it was announced, like right before the season three um, finale, that you guys were not coming back. You guys were canceled. And then it was uh, Lee Daniels, I think, made the announcement that you guys were going to do a movie to kind of wrap it all up for the fans. Um, so can you speak to us about why the show got canceled? I've heard it was because it was bought up by Disney, Fox was bought by Disney, but can you elaborate for us from somebody that's in it? We really don't know. Okay. I mean, it's just not something that they share with us. Mm -hmm. um, we know it wasn't ratings, right. like we know it wasn't viewership. We were no. doing, we were doing great. Um, so we knew it was more about the, the buyout and the, the changeover and the different people coming in and, um, all that we can assume is that they were making changes and they had, maybe they wanted to bring in new TV shows. I, right. I really don't know. Um, but yeah, they don't tell us. They're just like. So what was your reaction, <laughs> you individually, when you found out, when you got the news? Where were you when you got the news? Was it like from your agent or did you find out? On it was Lee. Media? Lee called me. Okay. Okay. So normally you would find out from your agent, but Lee called me as soon as he found out. Okay. And he just said, um, we didn't get season four. And what did you say? Were you crying or? What? I said, I, I didn't, I thought he was joking. I was like, are you playing or are you serious? And he was like, 
we didn't get. And I was like, why? I didn't understand why. I was like, why? How come? And he right. was like, I don't know. And I was like, okay. But I mean, there was just this, it was just surprising. You know what I mean? I, I just didn't. But at the same time, I had a weird feeling when I saw the finale. Mm -hmm. The it, way the finale went. Yeah. I had a really weird feeling. I was like, this is a little, I don't Dramatic. know. About it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we've never seen it. So when we watch it, mm -hmm. we're seeing it for the first time. Right. So I watched it and I was like, uh, what's everybody's dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, like, oh, what's going to happen next? Cut your pearls. pearls. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um. It was just a very, it was, I think it was just sad. I mean, everybody was sad. Yeah. Um, so the show followed three young women who don't, the people who don't know, but obviously everybody here knows. <laughs> followed three young women um, pursuing their, they formed a group, music group, and now they're, you know, navigating this whole crazy, hectic world of the music business. Could you relate to your character being that you were, again, in a music group when you came to L.A.? Yeah, I mean, I think that was what was so, you know, I'd been auditioning for characters um, for years. Mm -hmm. Literally at that point, I think seven years I'd been auditioning and I'd played some different roles, like guest, guest roles and stuff, but I had never played a role or even auditioned for a role where I felt like I could use my experience in that character's life. Right. We weren't similar, but our lives were. Okay. So I think that's what was sort of, it was like, she was a different person than me, but we had lived similar lives. Right. So I was able to understand uh, some of the choices she made and, and the sort of the, that chip on her shoulder that she had. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't have it, I understood where it came from. And I understood that I easily could have been more like her. Mm -hmm. You know, if I hadn't had the mother I had and right. the God I had, you know what I'm saying? Totally. Um, I knew a lot of girls like her right. in my life. And so she wasn't like a, a new type of person to me. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, in that way, I think that my life w was very informative to the, to the character. Right. Um, Lee said that he knew that when he saw you that, okay, I want her, but you had to audition like over 11 times. What was different about each audition process? Were you like nerve wracked that you had to audition so many times for it? Or was it okay? Well, it, was a, it was a secret to me that he knew. Like he oh. says that, mm -hmm. but he didn't let me know that at all. At so it was very, I mean, when I came in, it didn't seem like he was going to put me on this show. Mm -hmm. Like. <laughs> at all and like I said I had never done a pilot I had never been cast as a lead in anything right and I'd always played like guest stars so mm -hmm. I'd never been on like a core cast mm -hmm. so it was new for me to get that far in the process and I had no idea how he felt um but what I did know is that every every couple days I would get a call from my agent and it would be like they want to see you again and I'm like am I reading again or like Right. What is you it? know like what am I doing this time? And I would go in and it would be different every time. I would be singing one time and dancing for somebody one time. Mm -hmm. I'd be meeting and then eventually I met um I think on my third audition I met uh Brittany. Okay. For Simone. And mm -hmm. then I met a girl who was who we were sort of playing as Alex. Okay. So it was like so we had like a trio of like there was a star, Alex and Simone, that was like the same ones I saw every time. Okay. So I assumed that other people had other trios. Does that make, like I thought yeah. there were like different trios going on or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was happening. I just knew every time I came, it was the same girls. Wow. And we rehearsed together. We figured out songs together and harmonies so we could be ready for the next audition. Right. I it mean, was, you guys were perfect. The three of you, it was like you were a real, like, watching the show, it was like you guys were, it was a perfect fit. Right, and we didn't even, and that was what was so funny, is we didn't even, so me and Simone ended up meeting Ryan in our very last audition. Oh, wow. That's the day we met Ryan and Amaya. Okay. And we'd never met them before. So they came in, and on our last audition, it was the four of us. Okay. 
but it was very, I mean, it was very like, we still didn't know if we had it, but it felt like right. the show was forming, <laughs> like right. before our eyes. Right. So, yeah. So let me conclude the star talk. Okay. Do you feel like you guys will do the movie or have you heard anything more about a possible wrap up of it or could it be possibly picked up by another network like a Netflix or? We don't know anything okay. about any like remakes or movies or anything. Okay. But all I can really say is that if there's ever an opportunity to play star again, I'll do it, you know? Better. Um, and and if there's ever an opportunity to work with my cast again, you I'll do it. Any of them on any day. Um, so I'm just I'm just open to whatever, right? And grateful for all of that, and very happy to jump back in if if anything ever happens. But we really don't know. We're not like holding out. We don't know. <laughs> okay, like I was gonna say, give me some, but we'll. I'll be praying on it because you guys were such a good a good show and Thank so many you. lessons came from that show so many messages right for viewers yeah. that were watching so that's what that's what made us the proudest i think is when we got to um speak up for anybody that we could right um into the dark crawlers hulu yes. talk to us about chloe willis and um <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that experience of shooting that movie. Horror movie, right? So how was that? That was, <laughs> that was totally different for me. Right. Um, the character, first of all, was originally when I um, booked it, when I read for it, it she was very ditzy mm -hmm. and she was like um, almost preppy, like a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And I, so I was really excited to do it because it was so different from Star. Right. Um, and she still was that way in the movie. But when I got there, they were like, we kind of want to like lean into the star thing. So they put me in hoops and baggy okay. pants Your and whatever. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, give me the cheerleader outfit. Like I want to, you know, but it was, it was um, very fun to do something, you know, campy mm -hmm. and sort of over the top and funny. Um, I've never done anything in that genre before. So it was all brand new for me. Right. Just getting chopped up and, <laughs> and saying the F word so now. many times. I was like, I need to, I don't want to say the F word this many times. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It's on Hulu now. Um, yeah. It came out March 5th, I believe. Um, yeah. So last month. So people go and watch that if you're having Star Wars yes. Raw. Chloe watch Willis, the, the drunk party girl. Yes. Um, <laughs> I also loved you on Dallas, um, playing oh, Kansas. thank you. Yes, you played six episodes on that show. Had you watched the original from the 80s prior to um, joining the reboot of the show? No, I hadn't. Um, but I was so excited because I watched Step by Step when I was little. And yes. My dad was Step on there. <laughs> and when I came in the hair and makeup trailer, he was sitting there and I was like, oh, my God. So that was, um, it was, that was the first time I ever recurred on a show. Like I did multiple episodes and she was a like Southern girl prostitute. I don't know. <laughs> I loved it. I was here for it. I was like, okay, Candace. But that was like my first, um, yeah, that was my first role where I, where I got to go a bunch of times. And I lived in Dallas for like a couple months for that. Yeah. Um, that was fun. And it, that was my first experience, you know, being, on a set, having different directors every episode, and it kind of prepared me for like, you know, right. the next one. Um, last year, I believe it was, you went to Israel. Is that right? Was it last yeah. year? What was that experience like? I've always wanted to go. I still want to go someday. Um, what was that experience like, being that you're rooted in your Christianity, a woman of faith? How did that um, experience change you? It was incredible. I think that, you know, my whole life I wanted, I mean, there's so many places that I want to go that are on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. um, but it was one of them. I always wanted to go to Jerusalem and to Nazareth and Galilee and go walk where Jesus walked. And um, I think what's so interesting about our faith is that it's, um, we walk by faith and not by sight, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't need proof 
the whole idea is that our proof is that, you know, God left his spirit here. And so right. we walk by our spirit and we're guided by our spirit. But being in Jerusalem and being in the, the actual places where Jesus walked and standing in buildings he stood in and putting your hand on walls that his hands were on, it just, it, it makes your faith so much realer you realize that you're living in the same time as him like right. you're living we feel like it was so long ago right. but then you get there and you realize i can touch a wall that wow. was there when he was there and that's just something that you know you can't get anywhere else um and so that was that's a trip i'm just so grateful for yes and i want to go back with my husband and and show him um so we're probably going to go back. It's, I mean, who knows when we get to <laughs> travel again, Lord. <laughs> I just realized. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Man, you'll get to go back. You'll get to go back for sure. Yeah. Um, so, Drew, tell me about um, being a mom. You had a baby boy, Judah. Um, yeah. What was it, two years ago, I believe? Um, a, year, a year and five months. Okay. What's been the most rewarding part of being a new mom? All of it. I mean, every day, just having as an actor and a musician and somebody who's always traveling and mm -hmm. always in, di in a different place. Um, it was it, it was grounding to have this home no matter where I am, if that right. makes sense. Like yes. having um, Judah wherever I might have to go right. means my home is with me and I have a smile at the end of the day and I have a, a reason to come home and it's just a different experience. It, it can be lonely to shoot on location and, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just, I'm so grateful for him and it's changed the perspective of my life. I love that. Yes. Your pregnancy was even featured on star. Was that yes. your idea to, to have that or whose idea was that? Uh, so I, I didn't tell anybody I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. until I was five months pregnant. Oh, wow. And by anybody, I mean literally, like, nobody. You weren't but... showing big, or you were just small? Because you're tiny. Oh, my so. goodness. You should have seen the outfits. They were ridiculous. I was wearing, like, tents. <laughs> and I thought people couldn't tell I was pregnant. Right. And they clearly could. Or, or maybe they were being nice. I don't know. But I was hiding it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I didn't know what they would decide to do with the pregnancy on the show and I didn't want to ruin any storylines or right. you know whatever I wanted right. to give them sort of some some freedom to do whatever they needed to do mm -hmm. so when I told Lee um he <laughs> immediately started brainstorming <laughs> about the funniest things we could do basically right with this pregnancy with Star <laughs> and um he he never he never wanted to hide it. He always wanted to use it in the show. That's beautiful. He always thought that it would be fun to see her pregnant and like going ham on people. Right. And doing whatever she you know mm -hmm. whatever she does. And so he just went off with it, and I did too because I thought it was fun too. Right. So he was like, "Can you fight?" I was like, "I can still fight." <laughs> He's like, "Can you dance?" I'm like, "I can still dance." Dance, yeah. He's like on a monster truck. I'm like, sure. <laughs> so it was just. You know, we just had fun with it, and um, it made the it made the pregnancy for me so much more fun right. because we were using it, and because it, it, you know, they just never made me feel like it was a, um, it was like, oh, what, like, how are we gonna do this? Or it was just fun. We just right. thought of the craziest things we could do. Like, who's gonna you be the father? Me, I was like, why not two fathers? <laughs> You you nailed it. I was like, I love that because I always wonder, like, who was it your idea or was it the producers or were they okay with it? Because some people will hide the pregnancy. And I'm like, I bet that could be a lot of pressure on, you know, a woman to have to hide her pregnancy for work, you know? Yeah, I did have to, I did hide until I was seven and a half months. Okay. So until the, the trailer aired that showed that I was pregnant, mm -hmm. I was like going to, I, well, I couldn't really leave the house because I was in Atlanta. Okay. So I would go to Starbucks in like a giant. You already were world. oversized anyway, so. I do all the time. <laughs> yeah. That was the only gift. I didn't have to buy any maternity clothes because all my clothes are men's clothes. Right. 
Yeah. Love that. Are you doing any new music? I saw you put out um, a project in January, a single, I believe it was. Um, it was a, a single for, um, it wasn't really a single. It was more of, I just, I, I put out, the, you're talking about the coolest. Yeah. So I put that song out because um, so many of my friends and family members were struggling with addiction and then so many of the artists that we love were losing mm -hmm. and we're losing them young. And I just felt like it really is a lot of our responsibility in the music industry. We can't act like we're not the ones writing the songs that are glorifying these things. And we are, um, we're choosing the imagery, you know, like a lot of artists use like little pills on their album cover or, yeah. or they, you know, or they say it. Yeah, they say it or they make it, they just make it, um, they make it cute. And right. I was just like, we got, we have to stop making it cute because right. we're the ones in these sessions writing the hooks right. for the rappers. And we're, you know what I mean? Like we're right. all a part of it. Right. And so um, Ammo had started that song and it was never going to be something I put out, mm -hmm. but it was something that, um, not every artist wants to touch on. And so I was like, I'm just going to do it. But it's needed. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to do it. And this was the week that Juice passed. I was just like, I was fed up, you know? Right. right. So we finished it and we put it out. And the proceeds go to Teen Challenge, um, which, is a, which is an amazing organization that helps people through addiction. So yeah, that was the purpose of that song. OK. But my, my first song that I'm actually going to put out um, and video mm -hmm. will be coming. Ooh, yeah, video. I'm, I'm doing video. a quarantine video. I didn't want to do it, but I have to. I mean, I can't wait. You know, I right. don't know when this is going to be up. So the song and the video will be out um, May 16th. OK, OK, well, we'll be watching. Will you release it on your Instagram, obviously, right? Forgot about God. Yep, it's on SoundCloud okay. for now. And okay. then it'll, it'll be out on all platforms with the video May 16th. OK, um, back to quarantine before I let you go. How, yeah. Have you felt the need to create and then the need to not create? And have you like beat yourself up for like when you don't feel like creating? How has that been for you? Because so many people are like, you have to come out of this like this. And then other people are like, no, you don't. What I know. Opinion? I've never been um, very good at being still. Right. I've never been a very like, I don't take naps. I don't do like self care. I don't do rest and relaxation. Like I love working so much. Right. And I love working in between work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you I like finding something. <laughs> yes, I like finding something to do. Like on Star, we would work 16 hour days and in the tra in the trailer at lunchtime I would be filling in lyrics to a song for one of my writer friends mm -hmm. who's like, "Hey, can you give me lyrics to this thing real quick?" I'd be like, "Sure." Mm -hmm. while I'm filming you know what I mean so this has been a huge challenge to me right to not go crazy and to not um hate on myself like right. you're saying like it's really been hard for me to to not judge my worth based right. on what I'm producing mm -hmm. and what I'm creating and if it's good and if I'm if I'm spending every second of this time working and doing something and making something cool. Um, I've had to really, really fight to not beat myself up for the days where I just feel like, oh my God, I'm stuck in the house, right. you know? Right. Um, but I have, I, I have definitely felt pressure to create. I've written a lot of songs. I've written a lot of ideas um, for different projects. Mm -hmm. um, I've just tried to, to busy myself as much as possible. Right. And it's really my mom who's been like, take, it. You you know, take your time. Yeah. You need to let yourself, you know, everybody's in the same position right now. Right. You have to remember that. And she's been reminding me that everybody in the world, the whole globe is right. going through this with you. Right. You know? So, um, yeah, I've been trying to slow down and be prayerful and be Present. play with Judah yeah. sometimes and just have fun. Um, but it's hard for people who are work oriented and 
always putting that pressure on themselves. What about you? How do you feel? Um, I've been both. Like, I felt like beating myself up if I felt like, okay, let me just sit down. It's like, you feel like you have to keep being busy, but I don't know, like your mom said, we're all at, I mean, at a standstill. So yep. it's just doing the best that we can do, I think. You know yes. what I mean? It's true. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gorgeous. Thank for you. To me today. Um, everybody on here already followed you, but um, this was awesome. I really appreciate. I just want to say I really appreciate your questions and and just your you know your manner of 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 speaking and interviewing and all of that. It's just really genuine and it's been fun. So I appreciate. You. It. I love you. You love you too. Thank you so, so proud much. Of you kiss Judah for me and I will. Looking forward to your visual on May sixteenth. Oh, thank you so much. Bye, You're guys. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Follow some people. Oh, I will. I will. Okay. I will. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.